And I think one of the cool things about mobile gaming specifically when it comes to streaming is like anybody can stream. All you need is a device that enables streaming and you can start creating content. You can start streaming with it. Bobby, dude, thank you so much for joining in on uh, the podcast today. I actually had the pleasure of even uh, meeting you yesterday. So the timing of this worked out awesome. Yeah, I'm, uh, it, it was honestly kind of crazy whenever I was talking to Candy. He's like, yeah, I've got a friend who wants to play. His name's Stone. I was like, Stone Mountain? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I'm doing a podcast with him the next day. So that'll work out perfectly. Yeah, it works out perfect, man. Sweet. Well, listen, let's start with a little bit of rapid fire questions, but I do want to give you some time to expand on some stuff today because mobile gaming in general is, uh, you know, it's coming up. Obviously, we had the chance to play in this early Apex event and, um, I'm even getting a lot more interested, so I'm super glad to have you on for it. What's the best way to play mobile gaming in general? Is it iPad? Is it iPhone? Android? <laughs> I always like to ask this question, and I, I I know there could be multiple responses on this. This might be a controversial take in the mobile community specifically, but iPads are mobile devices, and iPads are the best way to play mobile games. I think mobile gamers in general are at enough of, uh, enough of a disadvantage there's enough of a like a stigma to mobile gaming as it is that i think they should take every advantage possible and ipads is where you're gonna find that is the sake of it being mobile not as common or do you see like do a lot of people just get their ipad they're planted like at an actual desk and they're really gaming at a specific location or do you think a lot of people are actually like commuting or actually out and about to where you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, for me personally, like I've played everywhere I've played, like, especially in airports, like you end up sitting around for so much time. Every airport has free Wi-Fi. You pull out your iPad and you can also get like a like a data signal going to your iPad. So I, I personally have used it all over the place. I will say it's not as convenient as your phone, obviously, because it's bigger. But anytime I got a backpack with me, just whip out my iPad and crank some games out. You can grind camos for COD Mobile like it's perfect. Tons of new mobile games are coming out in 2022. Rainbow Six, Assassin's Creed, The Division, Warzone Mobile, Valorant. We just played a little early access in Apex, which is probably going to be out by the time this is uh, out here, or at least more information on it. What are you the most excited for right now? I think most excited for would probably be Warzone Mobile, just because that's... I, I mean, for me personally, what my audience is excited for is very heavily tied to what I'm excited for because I feel like that's going to be the most accessible path to translate my content. I love COD Mobile, but it's been out three years now and you can't change engines. It's not like with Call of Duty where you have a new engine every year. You can build on new things. We're effectively playing like a slightly upgraded version of the game that we got three years ago. So I think Warzone Mobile is going to be incredible for the franchise. They've bought... I think four different mobile gaming studios. So this will be the first ever major mobile shooter that's not developed by Tencent either, which either means it's going to be an absolute flawless banger or it's going to be a disaster. But I'm hoping it's the first one. Yeah, likewise. So it, let's talk a little bit about like switching games and everything here. You were heavily involved in playing NBA Live on your channel, Bobby Buckets but you decided to switch over to Call of Duty and other shooter mobile games. What advice do you have for creators that are looking to switch games or even involve their brand like that? Because you've had such an incredible transition even from that. I would say, especially whenever it comes to YouTube, just because of the YouTube algorithm, if you're gonna make a switch that drastic, like going from NBA games over to shooters, you pretty much have to create a new channel because the way the YouTube algorithm works is completely based on click-through rate and watch time. So your click-through rate is going to be really, really bad just because of how different those games are, regardless of how loyal your audience is. If you do bring over those loyal viewers to a new channel, it's going to blow up that much faster because your click-through rate is going to be crazy high because it's going to be all brand new subs on that channel. So I think a, a big part of it is just understanding the way that the YouTube algorithm works and trying to kind of finesse your way around that because it can be really difficult to figure out. Did you go 100% of a switch over when you decided to switch from, you know, NBA to con? Did you still upload content to the other channel? How did you maintain, I guess, both of these at the same time? It's something that I've dealt with and I talked to a lot of creators on is like, I just don't have the time to do multiple channels. Does it make sense to do the switch in the first place? So the first game that I played on my Bobby Plays channel was called Rules of Survival. And that was basically a 
mobile version of knockoff PUBG. So PUBG mobile didn't actually exist yet. Rules of Survival was the first ever mobile battle royale. And when I first started, it was just a side project. I I probably played it like maybe once or twice a week. I didn't post very regularly. It wasn't until I made friends in the Rules of Survival scene that I actually started like streaming and uploading content regularly. And then the, I guess the scales kind of started to tip to where I wasn't, I hadn't been enjoying NBA Live Mobile for a long time, but that's where the majority of my audience was. But the Rules of Survival audience was starting to grow faster and faster. And especially as far as stream stuff goes, the streams were really blowing up. And obviously that requires you to invest a lot more time than just recording videos and throwing those up. So it was probably like a month or two into playing Rules of Survival that I started to go heavy on the Bobby Plays channel. It passed my first channel pretty quickly. As you see like the traction of this game taken off, you've got some people to play with. Like, is that something that you're like, you know what, this channel's doing really good. The other channel is still, you know, it's still there. It's still working. But uh, is that something you just be like, okay, I'm, I'm doubling down on this. This is going to be my full focus. And I'm just focusing on this. Or are you still uploading content to the other channel even as this is taking off? I was still uploading content, but it was definitely way less frequent. And the, the thing about NBA Live Mobile is it, it basically didn't change since it's beta. The gameplay stayed exactly the same. They had all the same animations. They like slightly changed the card art for everything but it really didn't change at all. So it, it didn't really require all that much effort to upload content about it ever, anyway. So I would throw up a video maybe once every couple of days while still not really impacting my schedule on the Bobby Plays channel. Do you still manage both the channels and upload at a regular cadence? Well, I do upload to multiple channels, but Bobby Buckets is not one of those channels. So right now I, I probably upload three videos a day. So typically one on my Bobby Plays channel that's going to be more heavily edited with an actual concept around the video. Then on my stream channel, I actually post once a day as well. Most of the time, that's just like an uncut gameplay that was really solid that I can throw a thumbnail on, throw that up. That has actually been something I've done recently that has helped my channel a lot to both increase video viewership and live stream viewership because the way YouTube recommends videos. Basically, if people have watched your videos recently, they'll watch your, it'll recommend your streams. If they've watched your stream recently, it'll recommend your videos. So it works symbiotically. So that's something I've done that doesn't really require all that much time because I can just pull it from a stream VOD. And then I actually uh, am partnered with Facebook Gaming as well. So I typically upload one Facebook Gaming video a day as well. Nice. And in terms of like your actual streams, how do you manage, first of all, where you're streaming, if you multi-stream, and then where you upload those specific content to across, you know, the channels of what you're doing with it? I'm just curious. So right now I am partnered with a streaming platform called Trovo. They, they're not super well established they're they're relatively new they've been very heavily involved in supporting especially the cod mobile esports scene so they fund a lot of the smaller community tournaments that happen basically a, a league that i'm part owner of called mobile mayhem that they fund tournaments for north america latin america europe and also multiple other games like free fire wild rift and i think a couple others as well i stream on there at the same time as youtube and there's not they don't have any like exclusivity requirements or anything so typically I just run everything through Restream and then to maintain the, the viewership on the stream channel videos, I typically just automatically unlist the those videos afterwards. I put them into a playlist so if people want to watch them on YouTube, they can, but not publicly available. And so you unlist it and then you'll still upload videos to the actual channel. If somebody's seeing the video, maybe they come over to the stream because it's on the same thing as well with the multi-stream going out for it. Yeah. That's exactly. awesome, man. You know, there's been a ton of changes that have even been happening to YouTube lately with streaming in general. Have you seen any uplift on that on your side or even more interest from people into the YouTube streaming side of things? I don't think it's really changed the viewership side of things. And a lot of it is just because COD Mobile has its own unique ups and downs. And a lot of time viewership for a, a game won't really depend on the platform itself, but more on the game itself and how healthy its ecosystem is. I will say... I'm happy with the improvements that YouTube has been making. I feel like they could probably make them a little bit faster because it does feel like it's taken a really long time to get some of those basic features that Twitch and even Trovo has had. Like Trovo has gifted subs. They have raids. They have all the things that we've been waiting for on YouTube for like a long time. And YouTube just got a full-time raid function. I would love to see YouTube maybe go a little bit faster towards some of those things. Many of the creators that are listening, you know, doing this, creating content full-time is just perfect dream job right was being a content creator your dream job as you were 
uh, whatever you were working on before? I never imagined that I would be a content creator until I started creating content. So basically, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I had I knew I had a very major like an entrepreneurial bent, so I I used to do like website design. I I sold a bunch of random things. I started probably like 40 different websites from the time that I was like a freshman in high school till a senior in high school. I realized I didn't enjoy website design because I I wanted to be my own boss and I could be my own boss, but I was still taking orders from somebody else on like what they wanted for the website. And a lot of times when people are asking you to make a website, they don't know what they actually want. So that was very frustrating. But it wasn't until I started making videos in my sophomore year of college and doing it just very casually that I started to get really interested in YouTube analytics and analytics have always really interested me. And I think that was re what really pulled me in more than anything. You have a TikTok of things I wish I knew before I became a YouTuber part one, but you never made any follow-up videos I even from that one. I guess, I did how not. did you even feel about making that piece of content or was it, 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 or I guess even getting into that space in general. And then with that, is there any more advice or more topics or ideas that you were thinking of making from it that you never did? The two most important things when it comes to YouTube are consistency and creativity. If you're uploading consistently and making good content, it will get into the YouTube algorithm eventually and creativity, especially if you're getting into content creation because you saw somebody that you really enjoyed their content, if that's what got you into it, don't just try to copy their content because if they're already well-established, you're never gonna be able to build a solid base around it. The people that I've seen come into games long after they've been established, long after they have a content creation scene, they've still found a way to blow up are the ones that are creative, that are doing something that nobody else is doing. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that you have to have crazy high production value. It just means you got to sit down and take the time to look at what the needs of the community are and what's not being met. I love that, man. That is great advice. Along those lines, uh, you joined the New York Subliners as a content creator over a year ago now. Congrats, man. Has Thank joining you. the team help you grow how you play or your brand? I guess, how has that experience been for you? I think the biggest thing that I was excited for in joining the Subliners was bringing a sense of legitimacy to Call of Duty Mobile in general. I think not that it necessarily, me joining them necessarily meant anything, but more that an actual CDL organization was getting involved in mobile gaming and COD Mobile specifically. I think that has brought visibility to a lot of things. And I think even since joining the league, like I've been quote tweeted by Nade Shot. I've had a lot of interaction from like major CDL Twitter pages and everything. I feel like given a lot more visibility to mobile gaming in general, because especially in North America, mobile gaming, it's like the joke of the gaming industry. Like everybody thinks every mobile game is Raid Shadow Legends and it's all pay to win. And a lot of people don't realize like there are legitimately skilled mobile gamers out there that are crazy, crazy good at video games. I've seen gameplay from some of these guys for a while. Even I remember back in Fortnite when, you know, that was popping off. It was like people building on that better than I ever could on my mouse and keyboard when I was like at the best that I could be for it. Like people could be cracked. And, and to your point off that too, you even did a video about that, you know, mobile games, because sometimes they can get a bad rep in general in the industry. But you did one where you were sending donations to like Tim the Tatman, Swag, and some of these guys to get their response and be like, what do you think of mobile gaming? And <laughs> the whole end of the clip was Tim just laughing at mobile gaming. Like, yeah, if yep. I got sponsored or whatever, <laughs> then I might consider it or whatever. I'm so used to it being a joke at this point that it doesn't really like, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Like, I understand why they think that. I also think that it has that perception has changed a lot over the past year. And I think a lot of that can be attributed to Call of Duty Mobile because there hasn't really been a mobile shooter that has actually been on display to a North American and European audience. Like all the all the big mobile shooters that are popular, they're popular in South America and in Asia, but they never really gain any traction. So I think even with like the jokes that are made about it, seeing Dr. Disrespect collab with Ferg and do their little 1v1 thing or whatever. And obviously that was probably for the sponsorship money more than anything else, but also to see it get some recognition out of that and for Doc to actually see like, this is a good game. And even to see them talking like outside of sponsored context, like COD Mobile looks like a good game. Maybe we should give it a try. And even Tim recognizing like COD Mobile's giving content creators their own skins in the game, seeing a lot of things that COD Mobile's doing right that maybe 
Warzone and Vanguard aren't really doing. On that point, January 13th this year, you got your own skin in COD Mobile. What did that mean to you as a creator and a person? That was not something I ever really imagined would happen. The craziest part about it for me is that we got to be like the three first content creators to ever get a skin in a in a Call of Duty title. Not that I think by any means I'm the most deserving. Like there are so many people that have done way more for Call of Duty that absolutely deserve that. I think it was more of like a tribute to how far that I'd come because when I first started making Call of Duty mobile content, I was at 300,000 subscribers, but because I was coming from a dead game, I was getting like 3,000 views per video. I was losing subscribers every single day that I posted. So for me to be able to go from that to being one of the biggest creators in the game and actually having a skin in the game, that was really the coolest part of it for me. Absolutely, man. And honestly, I think that goes back to your actual advice of what you're even giving out to people with what you mentioned earlier is like, do something different, bring your unique aspect. You doing that in the mobile scene is like, yeah, not everybody even understands that in Call of Duty and the franchise in general still don't, right? And that's something that you see upside on you see the value of you're investing in that that's where you're building community on like that's it's a massive opportunity you're consistently doing and building off of that and you know to me it's just uh it's cool that they're obviously it's a little bit different than the standard call of duty so they're willing to take different steps do different things coming into a mobile game and so to put the creator in it i know it's something that epic games has done a pretty good job of in terms of like creating the creator codes and that's very easily accessible to people they don't have that same level of accessibility to the war zone side of things or the PC side of things. So at least see even the integration with that and the future things that that could lead for, especially for just creators as a whole in the platform, right? You're the first group to even be on that in the first place. Like, uh, I think it's just incredible. And if they can continue to do that, bring the community in, like, obviously it's a win for us as creators as well, right? Like how, how did your audience even feel about seeing that and, and having that in the game and the response to it? Oh, they they were absolutely amazing. And it was kind of like a kind of like a we're proud of dad type of moment, because I even though I'm only 27 years old, I'm like the grandpa of the COD mobile community. And so it, it was cool to see like my community specifically rally around it because I'm not I don't pull the, mo the most views in the community. But the one thing that I love is my community is very loyal and they they stick with me through everything. Most of them have been with me for a really long time, almost rewarding for some of them to be able to like get to play as my skin as well. That's awesome. I'm curious too, like when you made that transition over from NBA to, you know, the shooter side of things, did you do a, a video out? Did you like share it through the community tab? Like how did you help get people on board in that first place to get some initial audience and traction over to this new channel? Because I, that's something hard, whether it's a new channel, whether people are switching platforms completely or whatever, it's really hard to bring that up. Did you have anything that was like, oh, this worked out really good, or maybe I don't want to do this again if I how to do something like it again? I mean, I did pretty much everything possible, like community posts. I think I did like a community post for like the initial announcement. And then it, what I do anytime I'm launching a new channel is just try to plug it in the intro of my videos relatively consistently and put the link at the top of the description pinned. But what I try to tell people is like, if this is something that you're interested in, subscribe, but don't just subscribe because like you're my fan. Because if you're subscribing, but you're my fan, but you're not going to watch the videos and that's actually going to hurt the channel more than it helps it because the whole concept of subscribers has such a dichotomy of like, I want to reach a million subscribers, but the more subscribers I have, the more people are able to stop watching my videos, which is going to hurt my click through rate. So it's like really tugs inside of me because like, I want to hit that million subscriber mark. But also, I want my videos to do better. And my videos would probably do better if people stopped subscribing to me. Mm, I mean, that's a really interesting pers perspective on it in general. Because you want to have the click-through rate up. And you want to yeah. have the retention up, too. To where even if they do click on it and then they just click away after one second, then it's like, all right, that's not a good signal for the mm -hmm. algorithm in general. You want, you, know, you want people to stick with you there. Yep. COD Mobile has grown in popularity thanks to streamers like you in, in so many different ways. At least from me out as an outsider looking in on all of this for the most part. But how do you see, I guess, that as well as even gaming changing the landscape for streaming in the future with mobile games as well? I think right now mobile gaming is looking for like a home whenever it comes to streaming. 
because right now Twitch, uh, it does very little for mobile gaming. And I think Twitch in general is losing a lot of like faith from the community, trust from the community, everything else. I think it's a big opportunity for YouTube. And I think one of the cool things about mobile gaming specifically when it comes to streaming is like anybody can stream. All you need is a device that enables streaming and you can start creating content. You can start streaming, whatever it is. I think there's a lot of potential there for YouTube to become the home for mobile gaming. I think they've done things uh, with like PUBG Mobile and Free Fire Esports, especially to try to bring in the mobile community. But I think all around like a big draw of mobile gaming is its accessibility. Part of that goes to ability to play the game, but part of that also goes to ability to create the content. So whenever I started creating content, it was it was on an iPhone 5 with a broken screen. I had to jailbreak it in order to get a screen recorder on it. I had to go through all these steps. You don't have to do any of that anymore. You can you can stream directly from your iOS. You can record directly from your iOS. Everything is handed to you whenever you get the device. Anything is possible. All you got to do is set up a YouTube account or a Twitch account or wherever you want to stream. And obviously, with the ease of creating, you have a lot more people trying it out or just throwing a game up or whatever the case might be. Is there anything that you see? And maybe you don't even look at it in general, but is there anything that you see like other creators doing where you're like, oh, Maybe if you focus more on this side of something, that could be something that would be helpful for you in terms of things. I mean, kind of going back to what I said before, if, if there's a like a creator that you're emulating, just trying to do what they do. I think also trying to like copy somebody else's personality that just doesn't ever work. Like you 100% have to be yourself. That's what people are going to be there for. And also people are going to instantly recognize if you are trying to be somebody else. Like eventually it is going to come through. I would say that's part of it. One thing I definitely saw somebody talk about on Twitter the other day that a lot of people do is investing like eight to 10 hours a day streaming to very few people rather than maybe streaming three to four hours and spending the rest of the time making content that can instead build up your stream. I think that's a really big thing that a lot of people don't recognize because it's just like, well, I'm working, so I'm building toward the goal, but you got to look at what's most efficient and what's going to work uh, kind of symbiotically like with I, what I talked about with my stream channel. So those YouTube videos, those TikTok videos, Instagram reels, whatever it's going to be, those are what is going to be able to grow faster and build your audience that will then in turn grow your stream, your YouTube channel with those longer form videos, whatever it is. But there's so many different types of short form content that you can make that can blow up so easily. It, especially YouTube shorts is another great example. Just simple ways to create content that doesn't take very long to make but it can pay off big time dividends for those longer form contents. What were some of the early like series, if you had any, that helped you like focus on like, this is going to be the content, whether maybe it was even on your NBA channel, but it's like, this is the series that I'm going to create that encourages people to subscribe or follow. The biggest one that I can think of was for my Bobby Plays channel. And it was really just when I started spectating people. Not even necessarily similar to what I do right now, but it was like right when COD Mobile Esports was starting to exist. Pro players were just starting to pop up and they were significantly better than people playing the game at the time. I would watch tournaments. I wouldn't like officially commentate them, but I would like watch the tournaments and talk while the people are playing and then throw it up as a video. And people love that stuff. And that's actually what got me into commentating. And I've commentated a lot of major events for Call of Duty Mobile as well. I feel like that was a that was a tipping point for my channel in really just showing the value of highlighting other people's gameplay and also taking concepts from their gameplay and using that to teach people. Because to be honest, like I'm not good at shooters. I didn't grow up playing Call of Duty. Any type of skill that I have right now, I developed from playing Call of Duty. So a lot of it was just me learning from other people's gameplay and just speaking out loud what I was learning from that gameplay. Man, that's awesome. I mean, well, to where you're at now is, is definitely far ahead where I am at on mobile or controlling or doing <laughs> any of those things. But I, that's also a very unique take, and I'm sure that's going to be very similar for a lot of people, even if it's not everybody, you know, who have always been playing shooter games or whatever the case is. You founded Amplified I Am an influencer management company that helps streamers thrive in business and creating. What made you want to help others amplify their voice? So it's actually a very interesting story. I was in a, uh, a small mobile organization that I will not name the name of. It was one of the very few mobile organizations at the time. Uh, and when I first was making COD mobile content, I wasn't making very much money. 
Uh, I was like looking for other opportunities. They gave me a small contract. They're like in six months, if your views are going up, we can renegotiate or whatever. Coincidentally for me, the end of my contract was actually whenever COVID had just hit and everybody was in quarantine and YouTube views were spiking like crazy. So then I had the opportunity to renegotiate my contract. I got a bigger contract, basically a huge scandal involving the owner. People found out he was a terrible person. He got canceled. He like he deleted his Twitter, disappeared. I was owed a bunch of money and a bunch of other creators were owed a bunch of money as well. The other people that were running the organization were kind of like left with this thing in shambles, didn't know what to do and all this money owed to different content creators. And so they they approached myself and my friend Noah, who I actually met in Rules of Survival. He was like the first content creator I played with regularly. And they're like, hey, we're going to take on this debt, but we're going to start our own agency. We're going to run it right. We're going to treat content creators the way that they would want to be treated. And you guys are going to know that because you are content creators and you know how you want to be treated. And so we started from there. We paid off all the debts that were owed to all the content creators. And it's been really, really awesome to see the way that it's blown up since then in the mobile scene, especially just in seeing the opportunities that we've been able to get. And also like they bring me more deals than anybody else. Like I'm part of subliners and I love them, but I I get way more deals from Amplified than I do from subliners because that's their primary focus. And so it's been crazy how that's blown up. And that's, that's what mobile mayhem came out of. They, they started, I was like commentating a small COD mobile tournament series with like a $200 prize pool or something. And that became mobile mayhem and is now blown up in, to a tournament series that covers however many different regions, different mobile gaming titles. And it's just crazy to see how far it's come. That's incredible, man. Is there anything else big uh, for your channel, your own content you're looking forward to in the back half of the year here? I'm really excited for the launch of Apex Mobile. I do have a, another side channel that's basically for all non-COD content that I make. Planning on investing heavily right there because I just really enjoy Apex. I think a lot of the gaming community has gained more respect for Apex and has started to enjoy it a lot more recently. I think more than anything, just because the I think the high time to kill makes it a more skill-based battle royale and the whole teamwork aspect is really fun. I don't think it's going to have the same ceiling that something like a like a casual title like Call of Duty or a Free Fire is going to be able to have. But I'm really excited for the esports scene, so I'm looking forward to that. And then obviously for my main channel, Warzone Mobile is the main thing that I'm looking forward to. Uh, we don't have any official news, but hopefully before the end of the year, we'll uh, we'll have some major announcements. So I'm super excited for that. And then obviously COD Mobile Championships. I love COD Mobile Esports. Hopefully this year we have our first ever LAN event. We've never had a LAN event before. And uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that it's going to happen just with the, the progression that people have made past COVID with vaccines and everything else. Finally going to be able to run a LAN event. And I think uh, that's honestly probably the thing I'm most excited about this year. Dude, well, there's a lot of stuff going on in mobile. I want to find more ways to get involved where I can. I'm definitely going to be looking out for Whatever you're posting, whatever you're doing, I'm going to I'm gonna keep an eye on it. If anybody else wants to check you out, see what else is going on, what is the best place to find you? Where do you, where do you want to send them? I am a Twitter addict, so if you want to follow Real Bobby Plays on Twitter, I, uh, I actually recently got unverified because Verified was sending me emails saying I need to connect a phone number, and I didn't see them because they went to the social folder of my email. So I'm not verified, but maybe by the time this gets posted, I'll be re-verified. And then my main channel, Bobby Plays on YouTube, is the name of the YouTube channel. So that's Awesome, man. Yeah, closing in on 1 million subscribers. So uh, that's incredible. Thank you so much for joining in, my good sir. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, check them out, guys. And again, if you want to hear any more podcasts from us as well, you can find them at pipeline.gg. So thanks so much for listening and uh, happy streaming, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I wanted to just end this with a little bit of context on why we do what we do. We're former content creators ourselves, and we just really want to help as many content creators as we can. That's why we started pipeline.gg. It's a platform where you can find other like-minded creators and learn from the pros who have already been there. Get step-by-step -step guidance so you can avoid all the mistakes that we made in the beginning. If you love the episode, there's going to be even more insight of Pipeline. So check it out. Head over to Pipeline.gg.